One by one, they shut their doors. News 5 has been tracking the closure of labor and delivery units across Northeast Ohio and how it's changing the stakes for women. We were told um, because our hospital no longer has a labor and delivery unit, the doctor did say, you know, I'm not an OB, so I can't find it, but we need to send you somewhere just to make sure. We first met Lacey Worley around this time last year. Her nearest labor and delivery unit in Medina County closed in 2017, leaving her only with options more than 30 minutes away. So when her pregnancy reached a crisis point. We actually had to wait because the helicopter was in Parma. So I had to wait for it to get to Medina. In the last year, our area has seen five more labor and delivery units shut down, leaving women with fewer and fewer options. Now we're following through on the impact. This week marks one year since two of those closures. And we know how much this means to our viewers. So we keep our promise again tonight, following through on the trend of labor and delivery units closing and consolidating all across the area. When we spoke with Lacey last year, she shared the story of her high-risk pregnancy and stillbirth. Now she's home with a new baby girl. But the road to that delivery had Lacey and her husband temporarily relocating. They felt compelled to take drastic action to make sure they had access to the medical care they needed. They sat down with News 5 anchor Katie Yusin to share their story. Hi, sweetie. Oh. Inside the Whirly home in Medina. So we kind of have a theme. Gratitude and thanks fill this space. So he's Justin, and then our son was Jaden, and we want another J name. It also fills their hearts. This is Jovi. Um, she was born July 17th at 3.20 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, she was just a tiny little peanut. She was four pounds and 13 yeah, ounces. She's... It's amazing how someone so small can have such a big impact on your life. She's filled our hearts and fixed our hearts in ways we didn't know we needed. Yeah, she's just the best little thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. News 5 first met the Whirlies last year. They told us about how they'd lost their son Jaden at 31 weeks. Lacey suffered a sudden and severe case of preeclampsia that almost took her life as well. They also described how it was a trauma compounded by the distance to their closest labor and delivery unit. I mean, he's still very much a part of our family. We yes. have um, a bear, it's called a molly bear, um, that we use to represent him. Um, we used it in our newborn photos with her. Just, you know, he might not be here physically, but we feel him and we know he was looking over her the whole time and that's her guardian angel. Now as we follow through with the couple they tell me they took no chances this time around. They waited a year made a plan with their doctors and then in the final two and a half weeks of Lacey's pregnancy they moved into this extended stay hotel to be closer to their labor and delivery unit at Fairview Hospital in Cleveland. Five minutes compared to a 35 minute drive from home. Or if we needed to call 911, they we knew that they would take us to Fairview versus a hospital here and then have to be life flighted or something again. We did not want that to happen. It was peace of mind yes, for you. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. It was the right decision for them as Lacey was again having some blood pressure issues and her medical team decided at 36 weeks it was time. They say their birth experience with Jovi was beautiful. And she came out crying and perfect and got to do skin to skin with Justin mm -hmm. right away. They and to me right away and I just, I just lost it. How was it. that? I was yeah. just so joyful and so in yeah. tears and just yeah. so blessed to be able to hold her for the first time. Their advice for parents who are expecting in counties with no labor and delivery services is to research, develop a trusted team of doctors, and know your options. We're so lucky to live in Northeast Ohio where it's the best hospitals, the best doctors, everything. We just wish those services were a little bit more spread out for people to have options. Oh, oh honey. Hi. The name Jovi, they tell me, means joy which is exactly what this little girl has brought into their lives. Hi. 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 We still to this day look at each other and look at her and we say we did it and we can't believe we can't believe. Finally here, yeah. I mean, we worked so long and hard to have her. We're just she's so grateful here. she's here. Katie Yusin, News 5. Oh. Oh, that face. 
If you find yourself in a similar situation, a high-risk pregnancy undergoing treatment and far away from your labor and delivery hospital, you may be eligible to apply for a free room at Ronald McDonald House Charities of Northeast Ohio. There's a link in Katie's story on the News 5 app and our website. University hospitals and Summa Health both said they still have maternity and postnatal care at the medical centers where labor and delivery units close. The only thing moms-to-be can't do there is actually deliver. When we told you about the unit closing at Lake West earlier this year, one official cited a declining birth rate, saying busier labor and delivery units have better patient outcomes. So we reached out to the Ohio Department of Health for a look at the number of births we've seen in Northeast Ohio over the last 10 years. You can see there is a decline in Lake County. Live births there dropped from about 2,300 in 2013 to just more than 2,000 in 2022. Ashland County is one we have reported has no labor and delivery units left. There were 645 births there in 2013, 55 fewer in 2022. Portage County, another maternity care desert, according to the March of Dimes, saw 1,400 live births in 2013, 1,300 in 2022. Finally, we look at Medina County. That's where Lacey lives. 1,700 live births in 2013, 1,580 last year. Okay, those numbers are based on county of residence, meaning if a Medina County family travels to Cuyahoga to deliver, that birth is counted in Medina County. So what stories do you want us to follow through on? If there's anything impacting your community you think we should be looking into, we want to hear from you. You can send an email to tips at wews.com.